Hey there YouTube, it's Chris WX4SAR here. In my 33 years on this earth, I've learned that there's typically three ways to do something. The right way, the wrong way, and the Kentucky way, which is usually the most dangerous. Uh, years ago, I had something similar to this. Uh, it was with, made with a really cheap uh, crossbow, pistol type crossbow and uh, it actually broke on the second shot. But fortunately for me, that second shot actually got the, walk, got the rope or the, the fishing line up over the limb I needed to, and uh, I was able to put my antenna up, but that was the end of that antenna launcher. And since then, I've been wanting to build another one, but um, things just got in the way, you know, over the years. I'm getting back into HF now, and I want to get an antenna up. I really want to get an antenna up today, because tonight at 7 p.m., the ARL International DX contest starts. And I want to have this antenna up and running by then so I can make some contacts. So let's get going here. Right. Now before I start, I should mention that this is technically a deadly weapon and it can cause serious injury or death. So you need to treat it like any other type of weapon. So the same rules apply as a firearm. Don't point at anything you're not willing to shoot. Don't put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Be sure of your backdrop, which in this case, I'm shooting way up there. And where the arrow goes, it's going to go off in a safe direction if it breaks from the fishing line. So, but yeah, be sure to check your local laws and everything regarding crossbow use. I happen to live in the great commonwealth of Kentucky, where I can legally own an anti-aircraft gun if I want. So crossbows are no big thing here, but you do still have to use caution because if you hurt somebody or damage property with it, obviously you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So yeah, be very careful if you choose to use this type of antenna launcher. Now the construction of it is very simple. You see, I just have a couple of zip ties holding the fishing reel onto the bottom here and the line just comes up here and I drilled a couple of holes through the end of the arrow or bolt, I guess they call it to attach the fishing line, and that's all there is to it. I picked this particular model because it has a uh, butt stock and a foregrip for extra accurate shooting. Uh, the last one was a pistol and it was it was really hard to aim. So, And the, gut, the, the fishing reel was mounted up here on the site, so there really wasn't any aiming involved. So let's go ahead and get this, uh, get this antenna. All right, safety is off. Three, two, one. Oh, it ripped. Well, that's why I got extra arrows. Oh, it broke again. Okay, I got the uh, fishing line up over the tree limb and uh, I took the arrow off the end of the fishing line and now I've tied my rope to the end of the fishing line and now I just have to reel the line up and over and he'll bring the rope with it, hopefully. All right, there you go. Watch the end of the rope there. See the end of the rope there? Mm -hmm. Watch the end of the rope. And up it goes. Alright. It goes. <laughs> Finally 
got everything set. The, the rope is up over the tree limb that, that I was aiming for. I got tied off to the fence over there. Now I'm going to install the plastic insulator and then attach the wire to the other end here. All right, insulator is on. Now, now it's uh, time for the wire. All right, I got the rope attached to one end of the insulator, the wire attached to the other end. Now it's time to bring it on up. All right, guys, we finally got it done here. The antenna is up and tied off and ready to use. Uh, right here, you got the uh, got the rope where it's tied off here. It goes up, 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 up there into the tree. Probably can't see it, but it comes out of the tree right over there. You might be able to see the insulator where it, where it ends and the wire begins. I would have liked to have gotten it up over the garage a little bit higher than that, but I'll take what I can get considering. All right, I got the wire coming down through there, through the trees, all the way over to here. I had to feed it through the trees again. And it comes down to the basement window where I have my 9 to 1 un, -un attached. And from there it goes into the window. And I am about to put this little ferrite core bead thing, whatever you call it on there. Probably ain't going to help anything, but it couldn't hurt either. So, well, let's get this finished up and get on the air. Okay, one thing I want to mention, if you try to use this type of uh, fishing reel, make sure you push in that back piece before you launch. That's why my first two launches failed and the, and the line broke is because I did it wasn't on free spool. It was on, uh, I don't know, it was on some kind of free spool or something because it's got this, oh, you can't see it. There it, is. there it is right there. There's a release that allows it to free spool, but it's not like total free spool. There's still resistance and that's why the line was breaking. Once I hit that button before launching, it was like, total free spool and then there was no problem so just remember to hit that big button on the back of the reel before you launch otherwise your line will break Wow, just like that, the band died. Oh, wow, there you go. This guy's located in Portland, Oregon. I got an S9 on Portland, Oregon on, uh, what band am I on here? 18 meters, I think it'd be 17 meters. Yeah, I'm on 17 meters right now at 5.20 p.m. Uh, March 6th. I think this guy's using a beam. He's, I think he said he's using a beam. W7RAT, W7RAT, Whiskey X ray 4, Sierra Alfa Romeo. Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky. I'm running 100 watts on a Kenwood TS2000 using a long wire in-fed uh, in wire 
that I just put up a few minutes ago. I wanted to test it out, and you were the first strong station I picked up. So back to you there, uh, W7RAT from WX4SAR. All right, thank you for coming back to me there, Michael. I appreciate it. Glad you're hearing me on the West Coast. Uh, 73, W7RAT, this is WX4SAR. Okay, 73 is Chris, uh, W7 Romeo Alpha Tango listening. Woo! <laughs> All right, guys, it's the next day now, and um, I did some... Uh, tweaking on this. I've got this attached here to take the strain off of the coax and I've also added counterpoise. It runs all the way down there and actually attaches to the chain link fence. So we'll see how this works. I didn't have very good uh, neighbor's dogs. I didn't have very good luck in the contest last night. There were just so many stations, and they were all in the noise, and I just couldn't pick them out. So let's see if this improves the situation any and allows me to make some uh, contacts. Now, this box here is not powered. We had that disconnected last September. So and that there is power to that, so... I don't know how much noise that's going to create. Probably a lot, with my luck. So, let's go see how it works. Well, I noticed the noise floor is lower than it was before. It's uh, about an S3 right now. It had been up around five or you know, five or seven at times. Sierra Alpha Romeo. Whiskey X ray four, Sierra Alpha Romeo. Whiskey X ray four, Sierra Alpha Romeo. QSL 59 Kentucky, Kilo Yankee. Yeah, a lot of noise on 20 meters right here. S7. Sierra Alpha Romeo. Whiskey X ray 4, Sierra Alpha Romeo, 5 9, Kentucky. QSL, Pennsylvania, thank you. Sierra Alpha Romeo. Whiskey X ray four, Sierra Alpha Romeo, five nine, Kentucky. QSL, thank you. 
All right, well, I had a few contacts there. Uh, was it still wasn't very good, so I'm not I'm not too impressed with this infed wire. Uh, I think I'm probably gonna switch to a uh, uh, switch back to a G5RV. I had a lot of luck with that in the past. Mm -hmm. At least it's working. I know my radio's working, and I made a few contacts, so that's better than nothing. Just keep working on improving it and do what I can.